so students uh, welcome back uh, to a uh, new lecture so in this lecture what i am planning to do uh, i'll go through the uh, this portion that is your uh, fall current limiter uh, this one you can see uh, uh, how to limit uh, the how you can limit the fall current level so if you see what we have studied till now and the numerical that we have solved the fall current always depends on uh, the impedance that is zf so zf is calculated by seeing the uh, thevenin's impedance that we have studied that is the network impedance so the network impedance generally this is generator in impedance then transformer impedance then if there is a transmission line then that impedance and if the fault is occurred at the generator terminal itself as you can see in the numerical so only generator reactance will be coming if there is a transformer then transformer reactance so if the reactance are very small then your short circuit fault current this one we are talking about so this short circuit fault current will be very high so in order to prevent this so first thing you have to know the impedance of each and every equipment that we have seen already in per unit diagram of short circuit current now once you know the short circuit current then you can limit it suppose this current is very high so your if current is very high then other switch gear equipments that is the circuit breaker relay which are used to trip in case of fault if there is a fault then its line should be supposed to trip so that will be very high and uh, so to reduce that to reduce the burden on the circuit breaker and the other equipments and the, you you want to also make the system should run smoothly we have to limit the fault current and that for that portion we use a item that is known as fault limiting reactors so you can see in the notes so this will come after this after the numerical you can see so this is so there are different types of fault current limiting reactors so this is the your current limiting reactors so as you can see this is your current limiting reactor so in order to limit the short circuit current to a value that the circuit breaker can handle additional reactants these are known as reactors which are connected to the system now a reactor is a coil of number of turns having large inductance to its ohmic resistance this ohmic resistance we make it negligible and inductance is high because we want to limit the drop that is i square r heat drop or voltage drop that should be less so the inductance is very high so what are the advantage so advantage what we have already studied advantage what is the advantage the for short circuit current will limit will we can limit it to protect the equipment from overheating faults are localized or isolated they permit the insulation of circuit breaker they permit the installation of circuit breaker of lower rating so if you can reduce the uh, fault current so you can have a low value of you can use a low rating circuit breaker so so what are the different types of now where to put the reactors there are different ways you can or different uh, ways to put the reactors the first method that is known as generator reactors what is done in each generator this is the bus bar where the all the generators are connected and from here all the feeders there will be two three four many 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 feeders outgoing feeders so so with each generator one reactor is connected this is extra generator will have its own reactants i am putting extra reactants in the line itself so there will be a huge equipments which is known as like transformer this is known as reactors so if you go to the switcher you can find it so it is connected a reactor extra resistance that i am putting in series so that is okay it will reduce the fault current because once the fault occurs so this will this will be in series with the generator reactants so somehow the fault current will be limited because the in this path this extra reactance is coming so it will reduce if the z is increased then fault current will be reduced but what are the disadvantages there are some disadvantages number one there will be a constant voltage drop because always it is this this one is always connected every time the current is flowing through this every time the current is flowing through these reactors so there will be a constant power loss even in normal operations there is if there is no fault also then also a current passes through this and the second disadvantage if the uh, if a feeder on uh, if a if a bus bar or the feeder fault occurs close to the bus bar suppose the fault is very near to this one so whenever there is a fault occurs 
that that voltage because it is it will be directly connected to the ground so this voltage becomes very less very small so effectively it is nothing but generator terminal output voltage if it is goes very low then your generator terminal voltage will be very low which will cause the generator to fall out of synchronism means generator will stop working because the terminal voltage is negligible here so if the fault occurs in feeder 1 suppose in any of the feeders if the fault occurs the third third disadvantage they are talking about if fault occurs in any feeder suppose this feeder fault is occurred so it will affect the entire system because there is no reactors in between them if fault occurs here then this feeder will get affected because all the generators will be out out of synchronism so no, this feeder will not also get power but fault is only here but this feeder will unnecessarily suffer so that's why the other feeders will also get affected so these are the disadvantages due to these disadvantages this modern power system we don't use uh, modern power system the generators that we procure or that is used in the power that is inherently has large reactance to protect it against short circuit so that's why this extra reactance is no longer required or no longer practiced it is absolute now so in feeder reactors second one is how this is known as feeder reactor so what is happening in feeder reactor in feeder reactor you can see in each feeder there is a reactance so as the number of feeders is more there are more feeders more feeders so the number of reactors will be also more so since the and maximum fault occurs in the feeders because feeders are the most exposed in the power system because it will pass through the terrains it will pass through hills it will pass through everywhere so this is the feeder is the most vulnerable positions and maximum fault occurs here so the large number of reactors are used and number of feeders are also more so a large number of reactors are used so what is the advantage here if the fault is occurred in any feeder if fault is occurred in any suppose here is a fault so you can see if there if here is a fault suppose here is a fault if there is a fault then this voltage doesn't goes to zero because there is a reactance so this drop will come here the voltage is not zero as it is not zero generator will not fall out of step and the other feeders will get the power through this only this feeder will get out here there will be a circuit breaker here which will trip this out and this voltage is not zero so the generator will remain and other feeders will get currents so there is a little tendency to lose the synchronism and the voltage drop in each reactor will not affect the bus bar voltage this voltage will not become zero due to any fault in the feeder only that respective feeder voltage will be zero but in between there is a reactor this one so it will limit the voltage to become zero so there is a little chance of tendency for the generator losing synchronism and the second one the fault will not feed out the other feeders that is okay we have studied this now if, if there is a fault then this will get isolated other feeders will get power so that is known as localizing the fault the faults are localized they say the faults are localized means wherever the fault you have terminate you are eliminating only that fault that portion only so this is known as localizing the faults this is advantage so what are the disadvantage here the disadvantage of this feeder is there is a again constant power loss because it is connected every time to the feeder so under normal operation also there will be a feeder fault uh, there will be always a power loss and voltage drop and the short circuit occurs in the bus bar then is then is no pro protection is provided for the generators you can see if there is a fault in here bus bar itself here so there is no protection for these generators and it will the so generator will fall out of synchronism because this voltage will become now zero because the fault is occurred in the bus bar itself here itself so there is no protection for the bus bar if suppose there is a fault so so this is second one and the third one if the number of generators are increases then the side of the feeder echo will have to be increased to limit the short circuit current okay if there is increase fair enough if there is increase in generators so you can see if i put one more generator here so if you see the fault analysis you will see all the generator reactants connected in parallel so parallel combination if you put one more parallel the overall reactance will reduce if the overall reactance will reduce the fault current will increase that you can see mathematically or you can logically also think if more generators are there so more current will be pushed through the system so the fault current will always increase so that's what they are saying here that is if the number of generators is increased so the so the, if the fault current is increased so you want to reduce the fault current so the reactors which you have used earlier 
will not work here because you will need more reactors or a big value of reactants because their fall current is reduced so you want to keep it low so your reactor size will also increase so next the next method is another method is the, uh, the last one that is bus bar why not putting the reactors in the bus bar itself okay fair enough so if you want to put it in bus bar itself by locating the reactors in the bus bar there will be advantages of other there will be because in earlier methods you have seen there is a constant power losses in the normal operations also so putting the reactors in the bus bar there are two different ways you can put it one is rings ring system and one is tie bars using a tie tile tie tile bar so you will see here the generators reactors are connected in between the bus bar so bus bar is sectionalized so this is one section this is another section this is another section so what happening here that under normal conditions this generator will flow this feeder this generator will flow this feeder very little current will flow through this as the little current will flow through reactors the losses will be or drop will be reduced current will flow but it will be less not the full current will flow through this major current will flow through this some portion will come through this and that will create loss which is less than our earlier methods so in this methods the bus bar is divided into sections and that there each section is connected through reactors under normal operation each generator will supply its own section and very little power will feed from other this results in low power loss and voltage drop in the reactors so some of the disadvantage has been eliminated the main advantage is, is that if there is a fault in the feeder only one generator feeds the current if there is a fault here only this generator will be feeding because this drop this will this this voltage will not become zero so once this voltage is become zero so this feeder will be feed by this generator only so mainly feeds the fault current hence only that section will get affected so only this section will be out of the service because there will be breaker then this portion will be and the rest of the portion remain healthy so it will not propagate the fault to the other parts so you can again you can say the fault is localized only to this portion only this portion okay uh, then next is tie bar arrangement so what is the tie bar arrangement in tie bar arrangement you will find uh, there is extra tie bar along with bus bar each generator is connected to this bus bar okay and there is another tie bar so the generator is connected through reactors to the bus bar to the tie bar each generator is feeding its own load own reactors and the tie bar is suppose generator 1 1 wants to feed feeder 2 this is suppose feeder 2 so how power will come it will come through this then this then this so effectively there are two reactors in between this earlier there was one reactor from one section to another section now you can see there are two reactors in this path i can again draw suppose this generator wants to feed power so it will feed power through this so there are two reactors in this path so if power flows through this so effectively there are having two reactors so earlier it was only one reactor from one section to another section so the reactor size you can reduce if earlier you are using 100 ohms so let's suppose hypothetically so now you can use 50 50 too so the ratings is reduced so if ratings is reduced then cost will be reduced so in this tie bar system there are effectively two reactors in series so that they have approximately half the reactants of those used in ring system and you got it in half the reactants the 150 another advantage is that the additional generators you can connect to the system without changing existing reactants so if you want to so one additional reactors now as there is no pressure on the bus bar itself so you can put a, another generator easily in the bus bar because there are reactors in between them to protect it protect it from the fall however there is a disadvantage that it will require a, another bus bar or additional bus bar that is known as tie bar earlier there was only one now here one this is these are the bus bar and this is the tie bus so that's all for reactors uh, for your course uh, you have only introduction part so that's all so what you will do from the next class i am planning to uh, i will not go that switch gear parts this is this already in class notes you will find what i have shared with you so if time permits i will come later so these circuit breakers these are mostly theoretical parts you can go through it there is no as such if it at all it is required i'll come later so what i am planning i'll go to the uh, this interesting part that is known as protective relaying which is some numericals will be there some concepts are there which i need to share with you guys uh, that is protective relay part you will find it after this
after size okay okay from here this is protective zone so from here we will start in next class and here this uh, notes the class notes that i have shared it is not enough for protective drilling as per your syllabus for syllabus you, there is some extra things are there in the syllabus so we need to cover that one so we'll go little bit extra than these notes a little bit now wherever it is required we'll put extra lecture notes i'll prepare it and i will share it with you guys so till then bye uh, stay safe